got this amazing bit of software that allows us to take samples of, in this case, fish from a population and just have a little look at what's going on when we take a sample. So our previous questions, we've just taken one item, one member of the population and calculated a p-value for that one item. Here, it makes sense to actually take uh, a sample size of more than one. So here we're going to change this now up to a sample size of 30. Uh, we're going to create this population of fish. The fish are going to have a mean, let's say, of 150 centimetres. We'll have a standard deviation of, let's say, 25 centimetres. All right. And so when we're looking at this whole population, we're assuming the population looks like that. It's spread with a mean of 150, uh, uh, with a mean of 150 and a standard deviation of 25. Oh, it's millimetres, sorry. It says here the unit's millimetres, not centimetres, my bad. All right, so you imagine these are kind of a, a histogram, kind of a bar chart, uh, but then the actual bars are taken away and we've got this nice smooth curve. Now remember that the curve is a, is a model and we're using the model um, to try and have best guesses about uh, the, the situation rather than dealing with the entire population itself. So what happens if I take a sample of one individual? All right, so this particular one had a fish length of 175 millimetres, right? Now we could work out the p-value for that single sample and decide if that fish did indeed come from this population of fish with a mean of 150 and a standard deviation of 25. So very similar to what we've been doing before. Um, but what happens is actually it's better if we take more than one fish. So that's the second fish we got, and here's a third fish. So see, when we select individual fish, they kind of spread out amongst the population. But if I complete the sample of 31, so I change it to 31 rather than 30, and then we just drop down all of those individuals, okay, it kind of, it sort of mirrors the, the entire population, but um, can you see we, we chose a few small fish, we chose a few big fish, but really all we're interested now is for those 31 fish, what was the actual average, the mean for those 31 fish? So now watch what happens here. And can you see that the mean of those 31 fish was actually very close to the mean of the entire population? So what we're seeing here is that when we take a sample of a certain size, this one's 31, and work out not the individual heights of every single fish, but the overall mean of all 31, the overall average, the mean of the sample is very close to the mean of the actual population of fish. Okay? And if we take another sample of 31, and if we calculate the mean for that sample of 31, again, it is so close to 150. In fact, it was the same as before. Um, was, was it just lucky that we got the same one? Well, let's take a, another sample of 31 fish. That's three samples of 31 fish. Let's calculate the mean. So close to 150 again. So it looks like taking the sample of 31 fish and working out the mean of that sample gives us a pretty reliable estimate of the population mean. Okay. Uh, again, are, are we lucky? Is, is there a chance that we might choose a sample of 31 fish where the mean is a long way away from 150? Well, it doesn't look like it, does it? So notice down here we selected a single fish that had a, a length a lot lower than 150. But because we've got fish higher than 150, fish lower than 150, when we work out the overall mean of the sample of 30 fish, they're all tending to cluster around 150. And so if I actually do this now, so this is many, many more samples of size 31, and look how spread out the actual sample means are. They're so tightly packed around the true population of mean of 150, right? That it's, yeah, you can see why taking a sample of 31 fish around the sample of one fish actually gives us maybe a bit more reliability about what's going on in the population. Okay, now if I just show you the sampling distribution, this is how tightly packed that particular spread of all these sample means is. Okay, so this gives us a quite a powerful tool uh, to make predictions about populations if we just know something about the actual sample. Okay, so this is the sample of 31 fish, and we took the sample, you know, a good few hundred times, uh, but the vast majority of the means of the 31 fish, the sample means are really hovering around the actual population mean. So this is a super important idea. Now, if I 
change the sample size now to take this one here to a hundred and then if I went through the whole process again there's that one fish and there's another fish and there's another fish okay so this is this is the same thing as before now if I finish a sample of a hundred fish there they all are as we expect then I calculate the mean now that mean is actually bang on and if I do another sample of a hundred calculate the mean of those hundred can you see that you've probably guessed it that the bigger the sample size the closer the mean of the sample will be to the actual mean of the entire population now watch what happens when I do this you can see that the actual spread of the sample means is a lot tighter for this sample size of a hundred so for sure the bigger the sample size is the more reliable our predictions and conclusions about the population might be uh, but of course when we actually go and take a sample sometimes we might be restricted in sampling size just because of the convenience of getting the sample there may be a cost involved in gathering the sample maybe complications uh, in which case we've got to maybe settle on something a bit smaller than 100 and one of the somehow rules of thumb is you know if you are 30 or higher for certain hypothesis tests then that's a good size uh, but you can even actually adjust for even samples of five or higher and when we do some of the following tests uh, we'll discuss sample size and its importance